What's up, my beautiful citizens of Thra? It is Danny Gallows, aka Dream Fast with me, of course. Who'd you think it was? Who else would it be? Uh, and I really want to get to your questions, but before we do, I just wanted to say a quick thank you. I'll show you guys some appreciation for allowing me to do this, just allowing me for to, to have this channel and to hold these Q&As and showing me so much love and support and magic and uh, just being so interactive and sharing your love for Dark Crystal. It means so much to me that you guys give me this soapbox to stand on to talk about something that I've always been so passionate about. I'm so proud and honored to be carrying on the legacy of Jim Henson and to be building this awesome community with you guys. You know, before this, I was a failing YouTuber. Nothing was working until I started this channel and I found this amazing community. So thank you guys so much, seriously, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you uh, for giving me this platform and for building this channel into this amazing community that it is right now. And I can't wait to share the love of Dark Crystal with you guys for years and years to come. Alright guys, our very first question of today, and I saved the best for first, you guys will see why in just a second, comes from uh, Alexandria Sabalos, And they ask, Whoo! Here it comes, the age-old question, which Urskek do I think is Darkheart? Now, of course, this is a loaded question. There's a lot of popular theories out there. You guys can look into it. A lot of popular theories out there that have been in place for a long time. Um, but my personal answer, and I know this is really going to probably shock a lot of people, but my personal answer, uh, right now at least, is I think it may be Skekgra the Heretic and Ergo the Wanderer. And I know a lot of you guys are like, what? Like, you know, where'd you come up with that theory? But look, when I talk about Darkheart, and I mean, I could go on for Darkheart about hour, for, for hours, um, but I'll try to keep this as short and simple as I possibly can. But we can go a little bit uh, in depth with the theory here because I have some notes for myself. Um, but when I talk, when I talk about Darkheart, I'm trying to look at which pair really represents who Darkheart was because, you know, who was Darkheart? He was a loner, he was a musician, he was out in the middle of the ocean all the time passionately singing and calling for his home world. He desperately wanted to return home. Um, you know, Gear gave up being a song teller. He gave up being a musician because Darkheart's song, songs were so good. So, when we look at uh, Ergo and uh, Skekra, there are some interesting comparisons. The first one is that, you know, before Skekra was the good Skeksis that he is today, he was a fearsome, violent, vicious uh, warlord who led campaigns all across Thra. I mean, this guy was basically a refined version of Skekmal the Hunter. He was like a literal embodiment of Dark Heart. He was like literally Dark Heart's Dark Heart, right? Uh, and then on the flip side of that, you have Ergo the Wanderer, who's just kind of chill, you know, nomad, just kind of wandering from place to place, not really a part of the Valley of the Mystics or anything like that. Again, a representation of Darkheart being out by himself all the time, passionately calling to his homeworld, not really being part uh, of the group. So that's, that's the first point. You have kind of like the mirror image, mirroring Darkheart on both, half, both halves there. And then um, the second point is, you know, Skekra and Ergo were the only two to receive a vision. You know, to me, it's like, could this be Darkheart searching for some kind of redemption? Why were only those two? Only those two were given a vision. Nobody else, not even Jen's master, was given that vision. It was those two who were given a vision. So why is this Darkheart's residual energy left over influencing these two figures, right? So that's the second point. The third point is that Darkheart, of course, was a musician. That's what he's best known for. He was this brilliant, um, you know, conveyor of music and songs and tales and passion uh, and emotion, right? Well, there you go. With Skekra and Ergo, once again, they're musicians, they're, they're singers, they're singers, I should say. They love to perform and put on puppet shows. Again, it's a mirroring of Darkheart. Darkheart was this uh, emotional, passionate performer, and here, you, again, we have very emotional, passionate performers in a different way, in a more hilarious, comedic way, but it's the same thing, right, as Darkheart. Um, and the fourth thing is probably the most important of all, right? What what is the role of Skekgra and Ergo in the show? What are their roles? What is their purpose in Age of Resistance, right? It's to reunite the Gelfling. 
They have received this vision and their purpose is to light the fires of the Gelfling resistance. Again, is this Darkheart's residual energy left over? Is he living through Skekra and Ergo almost like as if these two figures are avatars? Not like, you know, Darkheart is literally standing behind them, like controlling them like robots. I'm saying the residual energy of Darkheart is left over and he's living through Skekra and Ergo. You see what I'm talking about? And he's using them to, to uh, make sure that this quest, this vision is seen and that the Gelfling fires of resistance can be ignited. That's their purpose. Their purpose is to lead the Gelfling together so that they come together and rise up against um, the, the, the Skeksis. This is Darkheart, to me anyway, this is Darkheart looking for redemption. He realizes that he was responsible for, for uh, you know, stopping the Urskex from going home. And though he may have came out of that rage, and that's another popular theory that it was, uh, God, I hope I get this name right, Hack Hom. I believe it's Hack Hom. Um, and that's another popular theory was that um, he was the Skeksis that went on that murdering spree right after they split because he was so enraged. So obviously it would make sense that he went on that murdering spree. But I don't know, man. Like, I, I think that I like to see um, Darkheart brought to life. I don't want, I don't believe that he's gone already, you know, that he just came out of that, went on a murdering spree. What if he came out of that, he split in two, and there was some part of him there that was still human, you know, that still knew that... I'm responsible for this. I did this. It's my job now to live through these two characters and somehow find a way to get these two characters, Skekra and Ergo, together. So what does he do? He gives them a vision. They get together. They light the fires of Gelfling, the Gelfling Resistance, along with those other points I mentioned. So that's what makes the most sense to me. But again, I know you guys have all kinds of different varying opinions on that. So, you know, I want to I hear from you guys. Leave your thoughts on that down below. And uh, yeah, let's get into a great discussion about that because that is an age-old Dark Crystal discussion and I always love talking about it. Whew! Man, you know, I feel like I need a breather after answering that question right there. And that was only the first question of the Q&A, so hopefully I can go on uh, all right for the rest of the day. So let's get on to the second question of the Q&A here, and that's uh, coming from Skek Ock, the Scroll Keeper. What's up, man? I didn't know you were a fan of my channel. That is so amazing to hear. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that you're out there watching. Hopefully you're not babbling to yourself over there in the corner, troubling yourself with my various theories and idea. It's okay, man. We're all in this together as a community. Uh, but Skek Ock, the Scroll Keeper, asks, What do I think of the three-way alliance between Skek Ect, Skek Ayuk, and Skek Ock, the Scroll Keeper, of course? Um, yeah, one of my favorite alliances of all time, definitely. And you know what's so funny about that is that Crazy people all tend to find each other all the time, don't they? I mean, I have this great image of my head of them all like grouping together and being like, you know what, guys, we are the craziest people that live in this castle. We should probably be friends, and we should probably be political alliances. And they're, they're all together because they are literally the most insane Skeksis of them all, and they know that. So, of course, they're going to be friends. Of course, they're going to be together. Of course, they're going to be pulling the strings together. Um, yeah, you know, Skek Act in particular is, is one of my favorite Skeksis of all time. And that's because of the brilliance that each character uh, uh, brings to the table. And by brilliance, I mean complete insanity. And I love it. All right, our next question up today is coming from Cody Felicio, and they ask, how did I get into the Dark Crystal, and how did I get the idea for this channel? Again, really, really great question here, because I know a lot of you guys out there are definitely, obviously, curious about that, like, what was my first experience with the Dark Crystal, uh, and then what inspired me to start this channel. And, you know, the Dark Crystal for me was just the next movie to be watched, the next movie in the mix when I was growing up with all that great dark children's fantasy, you know, Watership Down, The Secret of Nim, Never Ending Story, the list goes on and on. Um, and back when I was growing up in the late 80s and early 90s, we had these great things called VHS stores. And we used to go every weekend, you know, that's what my, me and my mother did on the weekend when I was growing up. Um, we would have pizza parties and go to the VHS store and re rent a different, you know, dark children's fantasy movie. And The Dark Crystal was just the next movie in the mix. But, you know, my earliest, me my first memory really from The Dark Crystal is um, one of the most vivid memories of all, and I'm sure a lot of you guys share it, which is The Emperor's Death. I'll never forget, I'll never forget that. 
experiencing Skexo's death for the first time. And I think I was like, you know, you know, I was like 10, 11 years old or something like that. Maybe 12, I don't know, but it really doesn't matter. In that age range there, and I'm sitting there watching, you know, all these wicked, you know, disgusting looking reptiles, you know, in these ornamental clothes surrounding this big, you know, bed of red and gold, and there's this dying lizard, and then he crumbles to dust, you know, the whole like, you know, I am still emperor speech, and then he crumbles to dust. And I remember watching that and just being so affected by that and so terrified by that scene. And, you know, I think that speaks a lot to, um, you know, the difference, obviously, between uh, children's fantasy today and children's fantasy of the past. I think that that dark children's fantasy was really more influential on the imagination more than the sterilized children's content that we get today. And that's what made me... Um, you know, so, so, uh, that's what really, uh, um, ignited the fires of Gelfling resistance in my imagination, uh, if you will, because it made me want to be a storyteller. Because I saw that and I said, I said to myself, how can something be so shocking? How can something be so vivid and real and haunting and dark and terrifying? And how can I write something as great? I didn't know that, you know, puppets could convey that kind of emotion. Because before that, you know, puppets to me were just like Sesame Street, right? Imagine going from Sesame Street, watching Sesame Street to, to the Dark Crystal, you know what I'm saying? And seeing the Emperor's death and all of this dark, uh, these dark elements all throughout the movie. So it really affected me and it became one of my favorite movies of all time from that point because of how much it terrified me. I don't think that kids are scared enough when it comes to children's fantasy today. That's why kids need to be scared when they watch this dark fantasy like that. It's important because it really ignites the imagination. And that's what, that's what made me love and fall, you know, fall in love with Dark Crystal so much was that imagination that it brought to the table. Like, how, how is somebody writing the story? How is the story so good? Why are puppets so good at performing? Why was this the medium that they chose to do this in? You know, it causes you to ask all those questions and just, it opens up so many doors for you. So, um, and that's why I've always loved Dark Crystal so much. And the second question here, how did I get the idea for this channel and what inspired me to start this channel? Um, you know, just like you guys heard me say at the beginning of this video, before this I was a failing YouTuber. I used to do Star Wars theory before this, and everything was just completely failing for me. And I'm not ashamed to admit it, you know, you got to go through it. you got to experience it to learn from it. Everything is, is a learning process. Um, but nothing was working for me. But, and of course I've always held this love for Dark Crystal, but when Age of Resistance came out, that really rekindled my interest in Dark Crystal. And I went on to YouTube, and I was looking for Dark Crystal Explained type material because I thought to myself, you know, Age of Resistance is out. Somebody must be out there doing Dark Crystal Explained material. And the only channel that I could find at the time, obviously the only guy doing it was Jason over at uh, uh, Dark Crystal Conjunction. And he had this fantastic channel and I was, I was so enamored with his videos. I was watching this. It was like watching, you know, like Dark Crystal material on the History Channel or something. I mean, it, it, his material was just so great and so inspiring. But what I was looking for was, you know, I was looking for Skeksis biographies and I was looking for all of this, you know, Dark Crystal explained content. I wanted the universe explained to me. I wanted all these individual aspects of the universe explained to me. And he was more covering like lore stuff and news and stuff like that. And it wasn't quite what I wanted. So I, I like to tell people I have this great, I, I, I have this, this, um, this light bulb moment that's similar to um, Pam, Pam, the scene from uh, Pam in the office when she becomes the office administrator. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have seen the episode when that guy comes into the office and he asks openly to the office, is there anybody here who is uh, the office administrator? And Pam's sitting there for a second and then suddenly she's like, I am. I'm the office administrator, and of course she's not, but she snakes herself into this role as the office administrator. That's kind of like what happened to me. I was sitting there on YouTube, and I'm searching for Dark Crystal Explained channels, and I'm like, I can't find any Dark Crystal Explained channels. Like, what's going on? I'm not, I'm not finding what I want. There's nobody out there that has a Dark Crystal Explained channel? Man. Ah. Wait a minute. I know how to do that. 
I can be a Dark Crystal Explained channel. And I, did, I had this like light bulb moment. I was like, wait a minute. I was just doing Star Wars Theory before this. All I have to do now is is do what I was doing on my Star Wars Theory channel, but do it with Dark Crystal. Now. And I was like, you know, I had that moment. I was like, oh, I can do that. That's right. I have the ability to do that. So I started that, that channel. I started Dream Fast with me. And... To be honest with you guys, I wasn't expecting it to take off as fast as it did. It, it took off so fast. I remember um, writing an idea down for a video that I had that I was going to do at my 200 subscriber celebration. 200 subscribers. And at the time I was writing that, I think I checked my channel a couple of days later and I was already at 3,000. You know, so it was like the channel just took off. I wasn't expecting it to take off. And now here we are. Uh, so yeah, so there you have it. That's a little story of how uh, I ended up starting this channel. Our next question up today comes from two people, and I hope you guys don't mind that I put you together, but you asked the same question, so I figured that I'd just put you together. Um, and that's coming from Adam Schubsta and Steven Ruiz. And they ask, uh, do I think there's going to be an Age of Resistance Season 2, and how do I think it's going to play out? Um, and again, I could talk about this for hours, but we'll keep it short and simple. Do I think there's going to be a season two? Yes, absolutely. And the reason I say that without any kind of reservations is because the writers have admitted already that they have ideas and drafts and everything for season two um, set up already. And they had, they had said this, they had mentioned this in a news article a couple of months after the show came out a long time ago. So we're just waiting for approval right now. So you guys can rest assured that there is definitely going to be a season two as soon as it get, gets approved. We don't know when that's going to be, but it is going to be approved because they do have ideas. I mean, you know, unless something dramatic happens, but I really don't think that's going to be the case because it's been one of Netflix's most popular um, and influential shows. So of course there's going to be a season two. Um, and definitely, I think we can put that one to rest. We're just waiting for it to happen right now, basically. And how do I think the show is going to play out? And, and again, you know, you can talk about this for hours, so we'll just do bullet points. Um, you know, I think um, a main point that people forget is that when we get, you know, the, the end of Age of Resistance is that Brea has the shard. But when we get to the Dark Aug Augur's Observatory in the Dark Crystal, we see that she has a bunch of different shards and she doesn't know which shard it is. Which is very, very interesting. So the Skeksis must have made copies different copies of the shards to confuse the Gelfling. So a big part of Season 2 is going to be locating the right shard or, you know, discovering how the shard gets to Augur's Observatory and gets mixed up uh, in, in the mix there. Um, and, of course, we're going to be curing Deet from the Darkening. Deet has been affected by the Darkening. We've got to find some way to cure Deet from the Darkening. I think it's very... Um, I, I think it's very telling that we saw that vision of Deet on, on the Emperor's chair because it makes me believe that I think that the Skeksis might use her as a weapon, or they might, they might use her as like an infiltrator or something like that to take down the Gelfling, and there could be a love triangle set up between maybe uh, Rianne, Brea, and Deet uh, after maybe she's cured and she comes back, but there's something, there, there's obviously something huge going on with Deet in the Darkening. We've got to find a cure for her. That's going to involve more mystics. We're going to see a lot more mystics and healing ceremonies and stuff like that. Hopefully, anyway, that's what I think. Um, and, of course, this goes without saying, um, and it's a sad note, but it's true, we're going to see lots of death, guys. We're going into the Gartham Wars here. This is the start of the Gartham Wars. Um, and sure, the Gelfling will have a lot of victory. We'll see a lot of Gelfling victory. But the numbers of Gartham will keep increasing. There will be new characters. Like, like I had mentioned before, Deet may be an enemy. We may be seeing Deet being used against the Gelfling. This is the start of all of the death and destruction of the Gelfling, so it's about to get really, really dark in Season 2, and honestly, I can't wait for that. Alright, our next question up today is coming from FNAFLover123, and they ask, In the events of the Dark Crystal, are Skekra and Skekli alive, uh, hidden away, or have they perished? And yeah, that's, that, that's a pretty good question, you know, uh, during the events uh, of the movie, are Skekra the heretic and Skekli the satirist still around? Um, I would say no, probably not, because, you know, if they're doing anything past the Dark Crystal, if they're go going to be doing like a movie or a TV series or something like that, past the Dark Crystal, I would hope that they don't go with the storyline of the comics that were after the Dark Crystal, in which the Skeksis and the Uru come back. I would like to see them go in a different direction. If that were to happen, 
yeah, they would still be around in a sense because they would have returned to Thrall, but I really don't want to see that happen. So let's not even talk about that anymore. Um, but during the events of the movie, are they still around? I would say no, because um, first of all, we're not sure if we're going to see Skek Lee at all. That may just have been a character in J.M. Lee's book series, and we're not going to see him brought into the mix. I really hope that we see him brought, brought into Season 2, because I think he's one of the most fascinating Skeksis of them all, and I'd really like to see him brought in as like a main, even like a main uh, character, you know, you know, in the show, one of the main Skeksis that we focus on, along with Skeksa, of course. Um, but um, Skek Gra, the heretic, I think is going to have a very, very prominent role in Season 2, and then, unfortunately, and I know a lot of you guys are going to hate me for saying this, but unfortunately, yes, I think that Skekra and Ergo the Wanderer are going to perish in Season 2. I think that they're going to have some heroic ending, some really heartfelt, heart-tearing, even, um, ending, much, you know, similar to Archer's ending, where it's just so painful to watch them go. But yeah, I think that he's going to be a much more prominent character in Season 2, and then both he and Ergo are going to go, um and that's going to be the end of their characters. But like I said, I really hope that Skek Lee is a very prominent character in Season 2 as well. But by the events of the movie, I think we have, I think we see all the Skeksis that are there and alive in the events of the Dark Crystal. So yeah, I think they're gone by that point. Our next question up is coming from Trin, uh, and they ask, am I going to be doing separate bios for all of the mystics? Uh, simple answer to that, yes, definitely. I have a bunch of cool videos coming up. If you guys look in my discussion section, you'll see all of uh, my posts that I've made. And um, I think maybe like four or five posts down, you'll see that I put out a little schedule for upcoming videos. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming up. I've got, you know, of course, the, all the, the bios for all of the mystics. You know, I've got a video on Archer's Sacrifice. I've got a video of all the, the creatures of Thra, the heroes of Thra. So lots of cool stuff coming up. Uh, and I'm probably going to be putting up another schedule soon. But yes, definitely going to be doing some bios on the mystics. I mean, of course, you've got to have both halves, right? Yeah, i got to have the, all the Skeksis bios lining up with the Mystics bios. It makes sense. I have a lot of fun doing those videos. So that's definitely coming soon. Probably in like another month or so I'll get started on that. But that is definitely coming soon. Alright, our next question up today is coming from Moss Willow. Love that name. Really, really cool name, Moss Willow. Um, and they ask, where should I start with the books? I really like Skeksa, but I believe it's a trilogy. Um, actually, J.M. Lee's book series is not a trilogy, it's a four-part uh, series. Uh, um, uh, Shadows of the Dark Crystal, uh, Song of the Dark Crystal, Tides of the Dark Crystal, and uh, Flames of the Dark Crystal. It's a four-part book series, and where should you start with them? You should start at the beginning and read all four of them because it's a fantastic series. And really, there is no starting point you know, with like a book series like that, because in order to gain a full spectrum of all the characters and all the events, you have to start at the beginning and you have to read it all the way through. I think they're only like $10 a piece over on Amazon right now, so definitely check out that entire book series because it is amazing. J.M. Lee is an amazing writer. I really enjoy what he put together um, uh, with, with all the characters and the events and how everything plays out is so fantastic and you really shouldn't miss any single page of it. So please, whenever you get a chance, whether you do it over time or all at once, definitely get all four books and you're going to thoroughly enjoy them, I guarantee. Our next question is coming from Melanie Barnes uh, and she asks, what is the difference between Gelfling and fairies um, and do they have bathhouses in Thra or do they just bathe in the river? Oh uh, man, what, what a question. What, what a unique question. Um, what is the difference between Gelfling and fairies? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know because I don't know that much about fairies. Um, you know, Gelfling uh, females have wings. Fairies have wings. That's about it. <laughs> That's about uh, the extent of my knowledge there. I don't know. Uh, and do they have bathhouses in Thra or do they just bathe in the ri river? We know that Jen bathes in the river, but that's because um, there were no other Gelfling, uh, to our knowledge at that point, so there were no major cities. But in major cities like Harar and stuff like that, they definitely would have things like bathhouses and saunas and maybe even ice huts and all kinds of um, uh, uh, therapy, right? You know, there's all kinds of different therapy. The Gelfling share a lot of human 
human traits. So of course you're going to find things like bathhouses and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, again, very unique question and uh, definitely opens up a lot more questions about the world of Thra. So thank you. So our next question up today is coming from Ab Peters, or maybe it's Abe, I don't know. I like Ab better, so we're going to go with Ab. Uh, but they ask, do I think that the main characters in Age of Resistance are Jen and Kira's parents? Uh, and again, that's a really loaded question because there could be characters coming in in the next season that we haven't seen yet, and they could be Jen and Kira's parents. But, you know, where I stand on that right now is I think that the, the most likely answer is yes. Jen and Kira's parents are in Age of Resistance Season 1 because they need time to develop those characters and for us to get attached to those characters too. And so I, if there's only going to be two seasons, I don't think that they'd introduce Jen and Kira's parents in Season 2 and then go from there. So, And I have a lot of theories on that, you know, like Kylan and Brea and stuff like that. If you guys look back through my videos, you'll see... Um, those theory videos that I did on that. So yes, I think it's a, 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 the most likely possibility is that they are in Season 1 of Age of Resistance to give us time to build the characters up. Um, and then the second question is, uh, will Kylan become a bigger character in Season 2? Man, I sure hope so, because you know in J.M. Lee's book series, Kylan is a huge character, he's a massive character, he's a main character, a very important character in the book, and he's also a brilliant song teller. There's a lot of stuff going on with him being a musician and studying the history, finding Roundup's old notebook, and gaining all this knowledge and wisdom and using his musical abilities to actually ignite the fires of Gelfling Resistance through song and able to do things, magical abilities like that, through playing his, his, his flute and everything. So, yes, I think that Kylan is going to become, and I think we're going to see that in Age of Resistance Season 2. I think we're going to see Kylan's work and his passion as a song teller come into play and actually put events in motion and change events and do something very, very dramatic in Season 2. So, yes, definitely, Kylan's going to be a huge character in Season 2. I really hope so. So, our next question up today is uh, coming from Bones the Tofat. Really, really unique name, I like that. Um, and they asked me, will I make a video about J.M. Lee's book series? Um, and the short answer to that is no. Because, you know, I talk about J.M. Lee's books and all the stuff that he mentions in the books, all the stuff that he covers in the books, a lot in my videos, like in my Skeksis bios and in my other Dark Crystal Explained videos, I take a lot of stuff from the book series. So in that way, I am talking about the book series because I'm taking so much from it. But will I be doing individual videos from it? No, probably not, because I look at the books more of like uh, gathering information and knowledge for me personally to put, to put together in my videos. But you do always see those elements in my videos. So in that way, yes, I guess. All right, our next question up is coming from John Proud, uh, and he asked me, what about the Gartham? Um, well, the Gartham are pretty sweet, man. They're deadly, beautiful killing machines, and Skektek should be very, very, very proud of his inventions. Um, I assume he means, you know, like, will I be doing a video on the Gartham? And, uh, I, I mean, sure, you know, the, the Gartham are uh, amazing creatures. Um, and they definitely deserve their own video, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a video on just all of the creatures of Thra and the Gartham will be included in that video So you guys can look forward to that video soon again That's coming in like you know another month or so once I get all of my uh, my, my ideas that I have for my next video all put together in an order I will be doing a creatures of Thra and it'll include all of the creatures that you guys want to hear about and some of the plant life too uh, depending on uh, how much I put together for the video, but yes, that's definitely coming soon. Our next question up today is coming from Sam Rizzardi, uh, and he asked, which Skeklak do I prefer? Uh, the manga version of Skeklak or the version in Age of Resistance? And obviously, this is a very, very easy answer for me. Definitely the Age of Resistance version, because there's just no getting around Aquafina's voice. I mean, she just, she brought that character to life. She voiced that character so brilliantly, and I mean, everything about Skeklak is so disgusting and evil and wicked, and I just love it so much. And it wouldn't be, the Skeklak wouldn't be the character 
um, uh, uh, that she is today without Aquafina's voice. That voice is really what carries the character, and I love the embodiment of that character on screen. So definitely, definitely Age of Resistance version. For our next question, it's kind of a three-part question here, uh, but it all fits together perfectly, so it's cool. Uh, coming from Crayon Azilla, another great name. Man, you guys got some great names out there. Uh, and they asked me, who is my favorite Gelfling, my favorite Skeksis, and my favorite Mystic? Um, and I thought about this for a little bit. I got my, my answers here. Um, right now, my favorite Gelfling is definitely Brea. Uh, as uh, Jason from Dark Crystal Conjunction says, you can't spell Bay without Brea. Uh, and that's, de that's definitely uh, very true. But the reason why I love Brea so much is because, you know, she has such an interesting story. You know, really because um, she asks questions. She's like the only Gelfling that won't stop asking why, that seeks knowledge and truth above all else. And because of her quest for truth, she is able to break away from that, uh, that religion that, that her and her mother and her sisters follow so proudly that is the Skeksis, the Lords of the Crystal. She's able to break away from that because she values truth above all else. So she just got that really, really interesting story and I love her character development. And um, that's what makes her such a great leader of the Gelfling Resistance as well. Um, my favorite Skeksis definitely has to be Skekra, the, the heretic. Why? Well, because, again, just like Brea, he has the most interesting backstory. He has a really, really fascinating, complex backstory. That's why I did that Fear and Loathing video on them. Um, because, uh, on both, you know, uh, the heretic and the wander, because they're such fascinating creatures. I mean, they, they, they have a really, really brilliant backstory, how they came together. They were the, the receiving this vision and then doing drugs, basically, out, out, out in uh, the, the circle of the suns, you know, receiving these visions, the puppet show, the sing. I mean, there's so much. And then before that, he used to be this fearsome warlord, and, and they're the only two pair living together. I mean, you could go on and on and on. But yeah, Skekra is definitely my favorite because of his very fascinating, interesting backstory. Um, and then, who is my favorite mystic? Probably Early, the storyteller. Early is starting to get a lot more attention now, um, especially in the comic series right now. Early is the keeper of the Tomb of Relics, where down in, in the Groton Caves, where all of these old Gelfling relics and artifacts are, are kept. And in the comic series, he has a very, very uh, prominent role as this kind of, I mean, he knows so much about Thra. Knowledge and wisdom just seep out of him, just pour out of him. He is like, he's like the mystic to end all mystics. He is the literal definition of a mystic. He embodies what it is uh, to be a mystic. So that's why I've always loved Early so much. And, and he is a great storyteller uh, as well. You know, it's something that I identify with. I'm a storyteller myself. So obviously Early is going to be my favorite mystic. And I really hope we see him. That's another character that I really hope we see brought into season two to give us that knowledge and wisdom. To, uh, I hope we get to go down and see the Tomb of Relics because it's a very, very important, crucial part of the history of Thra. His mystic powers must be visiting me right now through the rays of the sun, through the rays of the sun. All right, back to the questions here. Our next question up today is coming from It's All Soup, another great name. Uh, and they ask, um, why is there so little focus on the mystics compared to the Skeksis? It's a really, really interesting question, and um, to answer it simply, I don't think it's anything uh, in the dynamics of the storytelling itself. I don't think that it's done uh, on purpose or anything like that. I just think that that's the way it is now. It's just that we only have the Dark Crystal movie and uh, our first season of uh, Age of Resistance, and it just so happens that the Skeksis are more prominent characters in those um, to in the movie and the TV show for right now. But in season two, I think they're going to be expanding on the mystics much more. And actually in J.M. Lee's book series, interestingly enough, um, the book series does focus more on the mystics than the Skeksis. The Skeksis are hardly mentioned, aside from like Skeksa and Skek Lee, of course. The, Skek the Skeksis are barely mentioned uh, in his book series, and instead more of the focus is on the mystics. So that's a very, very interesting aspect of that. But yeah, like, like I said, in season two, I think we're going to get the mystics world is going to be opening up much more. 
And it's just that that's the way it is right now. Again, it's not done on purpose. It's just that we just happen to have more material on the Skeksis right now because that's what Age of Resistance had to do. The first season had to set up the Lords of the Crystal and that's going to take away some attention from the Mystics. But season two, this is going to be about, you know, like I mentioned before, about curing Deet from the Darkening. We're going to have more mystical stuff and more mystics in the picture definitely in Season 2, so just keep waiting. We're going to get a lot more material on the mystics coming soon. Our next question today is coming from Christina, and Christina asked me, um, what would my Skeksis and Uru names be? And you know, I thought about this for a little while too, uh, and I finally settled on two, and that would be Skek Dude and Ur Bro. I mean, does it get any better than that? I mean, it's unique, it's fitting, nobody has it as far as I know. And that way my Erskek name could be Dude Bro. Yeah. So our next question is coming from K-Pop Anime 14. Uh, and they ask, uh, where do you think Rian's mother and siblings are? And do I really think that Kylan and Brea will be together? Uh, I'll answer that. The last question first, because it's, it's, it's a more simple answer. I did do a theory on that before, and you guys can watch that video to see how I explain everything. And there are some things that line up, but a theory is a theory for a reason. You know, you change uh, opinions all the time. There is a way for Kylan and Brea to be together, and it is fitting in a lot of ways. Um, but, you know, my opinion can change, and I'm going to wait to do any more theories, really, until we get some solid character development, really, in Season 2. And we might have, like I said before, we might have more characters coming in. So I'm going to wait for, for any more, uh, more theories on that, because right now we really don't know. It could be anyone, especially if they're introducing new characters. Um, but the first question um, about Rianne's mother and siblings, the reason that they're asking that is because in J.M. Lee's book series, Rian actually does go home, even after he's accused. He does go back home to see his mother and his siblings, and they are actually featured a lot um, in the books. And are they in the show at all? Um, they might be. He might just be trying to save them from danger, so he, that might be the reason why he's not going home. But a big part of me tends to believe that I don't think that we are... That, um, we are going to see them at all. Maybe they change the story around so it, it was just Rianne and his father left and he doesn't have any siblings and his mother is not there anymore e either. And the reason I think that is because Rianne is alone all the time. He doesn't ever go home uh, at any point to see anybody. And again, it could be that he's just trying to keep them away from danger, but I think that they would have introduced characters like that in Season 1. But again, it is definitely a possibility that they could just bring them in in Season 2 and Rianne was just waiting to go back home. So, it's a tough question to answer. It would be really, really cool to see his mother and siblings because there's a lot of interesting story development that we could have happen, that could happen between them. But, Again, I think they would have introduced them in Season 1, and I think that Rianne, it is a possibility that Rianne could be alone. He is completely, completely alone now. With Ordon gone, it's just Rianne left, and that's what makes his character so strong, is he's the only one there, now he has to carry on this leg legacy, and maybe he's someone's parent. And that makes it even, his character even stronger. Because if he's the last of the line, he needs to carry on his blood somehow through a child. So it makes his character even stronger, I think. Our next question up today is a really, really interesting question uh, coming from the Moody Foodie. Uh, what's up? I know you well from Twitter. I see you all the time. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Um, and they ask, why do I think Skeksil's voice sounds so different from the others? I assume uh, it comes from his Erskek form. Um, and this is interesting because, yeah, the Chamberlain does sound drastically different than a lot of Skeksis, um, but so does every other Skeksis. I mean, look, look at Skek Ekt, Skek Ayuk. I mean, the, these are characters with very, very unique voices, so I don't necessarily think that the pattern of the voice, or the sound of the voice, the tone of the voice, the speech patterns and stuff like that, I don't think that there's necessarily any history attached to that. I think that that's just, that's the magic of Jim Henson and his entire crew of puppeteers and voice actors, is that he wanted to give every Skeksis a very, very unique voice. That was the whole point of having all of these very, very drastically different characters. It comes through, it's conveyed in the voice. So I think it's as simple as that, is that you wanted the Chamberlain to sound like that because he is a silver-tongued snake. So you want him to have this very mm -hmm kind of snaky voice 
So that's where it comes from, is each character, and again with Skek a Yuck and Skek, you know, Skek Ekt is completely crazy and spastic, so she has this kind of really high voice like that, and Skek a Yuck is a, you know, the gourmand gorging himself on food, so he has this kind of, you know, fat, strained voice, right? So it doesn't come from the history of the characters, it just comes from the brilliance of the voice actors wanting to give them all unique voices. But again, very, very interesting question. Uh, but yeah, that's just the magic of Jim Henson, as always. All right, so we've arrived finally at our very last question of the Q&A, and save the best for last here. It's coming from Storyteller of Thra, which is, um, a, you know, they are one of the biggest supporters of this channel, so thank you so much um, for supporting this channel the way that you do. I see, I know, both you and the Moody Foodie, you know, I see you guys all the time on Twitter, and you're, you, are, you are just overwhelmingly supportive of this channel, and I really, really appreciate that, so thank you uh, so much. And for asking this question here, uh, Storyteller of Thra asked me, um, what is my favorite place in all of Thra? Really, really great, great question. Um, to end on here. So again, I'm gonna assume this means, you know, where would I like to vacation or where would I like to live in Thra? And that's kind of an easy choice for me because I'm a big fan of mountains, I'm a big fan of the winter time, snow, and of the Grey Sea, or the Silver Sea, shall we say. So there's only one location like that in all of Thra, and that is Harar. I would definitely have some place, like some small shack, way up on a mountainside overlooking the sea, winter time all the time. I wouldn't live in the city, it's a little too crowded and, uh, uh, you know, the people are a little, a little rude and snide, shall we say, um, in the city. So I'd definitely live away from the city up on the mountainside, but definitely Harar, man. It's like, you know, I, I just, I gotta have the mountains and the ocean and uh, the beautiful colors in the sky and stuff like that. It's a no-brainer for me. I would be in the mountains of Harar, definitely. Um, the most beautiful place arguably the most beautiful place in all of Thra so far. Well, my friends, that's going to do it for today's q and I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching this. I have a lot of fun making this, uh, aside from my neighbors, of course. But I have a lot of fun interacting with you guys and answering these questions. You guys ask such great, unique, interesting questions, uh, and it's great really answering them. It connects us all so much uh, to the world of Thra. And, you know, it, it, and it opens up our knowledge, too, and, uh, and just cements our love for this series. Which, that's what I think Q&As really do, is, aside from connecting people, it really, really, you know, uh, uh, just kindles our passion for this show, you know, making us more a part of the world of Thra. So I really appreciate that you guys ask these questions and that you support me so much. I just saw, overnight, I went up another 100 subscribers, so welcome to all of you brand new people uh, to Dream fast with me. This is a passion project of mine. It, it, it always has been. It always will be. And I cannot wait to see this community keep growing. And when Age of Resistance Season 2 is announced, and it will be announced, rest assured guys, it's coming. I know we're going through a slow, tedious process right now, but trust me, it's coming. Age of Resistance Season 2 is coming. Keep telling yourselves that. Keep the faith. Keep believing, uh, and we will see it. And let's keep growing this community uh, as big and as, uh, as, as we can, because Dark Crystal deserves it. Dark Crystal, I really believe it's going to be the next big franchise, along with Star Wars, you know, and Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Dark Crystal is next, but it's up to us to change that. We have to change that. We have to let people know. We have to keep growing these channels and keep growing these communities. And you guys do such an amazing job at that, showing all of your love and support and magic. It's seriously heartwarming to me. So thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to do this. And uh, yeah, before I babble on too long, I'll get out of here now and I'll end this video just by saying one simple thing. I know a lot of you guys will probably hate, but I'm going to say it anyway. Fourth oh! Fourth <laughs> Yeah, that really just happened. <laughs>